have a Rails application here for managing support tickets. And currently it's possible to create a new ticket manually through the web interface. But I would like some way to automatically create tickets based off of incoming email. So I need some way to uh, receive email and handle it automatically through our Rails app. Now handling incoming mail can be quite challenging with so many different solutions available. But the Mailman gem makes this quite a bit easier. This runs in its own separate process and can handle receiving mail in a variety of ways, and it's up to you what happens to it based off of a custom script you write. Now, the, uh, most of the documentation is inside of the user guide here, so be sure to check that out for more details. Let's get started by adding Mailman to our application. I'll add it to the gem file here, uh, just called Mailman, and I don't want this loaded within Rails because this is a separate process, so I'm going to pass in require as false into this. And don't forget to run the bundle command to install that gem, and then we want to set up a separate script because a mailman is going to be in running inside of its own separate process. So we need to make a script under the script directory here. I'm going to call it mailman server. And I want this to be a Ruby executable, so I'll just make a shebang at user bin environment Ruby. And then I need to load up Ruby gems and then uh, bundler setup. So that way it uses the same version of the uh, mailman gem that we loaded up through bundler. And then I can load that mailman gem inside of here. And for now, I'm just going to print out hello world just to make sure this is working. And then I need to make that script executable with chmod. It's under the mailman server script. Then I can run it directly like that. Now I do uh, get my hello world output here, but I also get some warnings here and they all have to do with this FSSM gem. Um, for the most part, you could just ignore this. I'm not actually going to use this portion of the gem, but you may just want to install the RBFS event. All right, so now we can replace this test output with our actual mailman server, and we can start that up with call to mailman application dot run and pass it a block. And in here, you can define what mailman calls routes, and that just determines how the incoming mail is handled. Now you can use a default route like this, and that way this block will be called for every incoming mail. Now in here we have access to the message object, which is a instance of mail message. So you may want to check the documentation of that. It's in the mail gem, so you can see exactly what you can call on a message. So uh, what, what we can do here is let's just say received the um, message subject here. Now, Mailman can receive mail in three different ways, as shown in this user guide here. A standard input is uh, great for testing. You could just pass in an email message right into the server. Um, POP3 is what I'm going to be using later on because it's one of the easiest ways to set it up, especially through a Gmail account. And there's also MailDir, which I'll uh, explain a little bit more later on as well. First, I'm going to test this using the standard input approach. As you can see, I have a test email file already set up here. Just a very simple formatted email with the subject of mailman test. So let's try passing that mailman test file into the uh, mailman server directly like that. So now it starts up mailman and the output I get is received mailman test. So that's working. Now mailman will detect that we're in a Rails application and automatically start up the environment. So we have access to all of our models in here as well. So this means we can create a new ticket here. And I want the uh, subject attribute to be set to the message subject. And then we have a body attribute as well, which will be the message body dot decoded. And then finally, there's the from attribute, which I'm going to set to the message from, which is uh, multiple addresses, uh, the first one in there. So now I'll run that test again by passing in that email file. And now it looks like it got the message, but it didn't print out anything because it actually created a new ticket. And going to our support tickets app, you can see we now have a ticket record here. This is the subject right here, the from address, and the body all looks correct. Next, let's see how we can use routes to process the message in different ways. You can see here that there are a variety of routing methods that are supported. You can set the uh, to and subject and from attributes to uh, match a specific filter, and that way it will only call that block if that given message matches that condition. You can also pass in variables in here that get passed in through the block. We could apply this to our ticketing application. Uh, let's say we want to update tickets instead of always creating them through incoming email. We might make a uh, route here that says to match the subject if it matches update 
for a given uh, number, and then pass that number in as a ticket ID. And then we can update, actually ticket.update, pass in our ticket ID, and pass in, let's say, the body, and set that to the message body decoded again. So to try this out, we can change our test email here, and let's change it to say updated, and pass in the subject as update one, because that's the uh, first ticket that we created. So now when we run our mailman server command again, it's going to process that email, but this time updating the record. And you can see that by going to the app and hitting reload, look at the message here, it now says updated, yay. So this routing feature is pretty neat, but I would use it sparingly because the logic can get pretty complex here and it's more difficult to test. Instead, I often prefer to just move all the logic into a class method. So in here, let's direct this to a method called uh, receive mail and pass in our message. And you may wanna pass in other arguments in here as well if you need them, but let's just call that. So now inside of the ticket class, we need to uh, define that receive mail method that accepts a message. And in here, we're doing pretty much the same logic, so I'm just going to paste this code in. The first thing I do is try to find a ticket ID which matches that update subject like we did before. And if it's present, it's going to update the ticket with that body. Otherwise, it's going to create the ticket like we did before. And then testing this behavior becomes very easy. You just pass in any mail message instance to this and then check out the behavior is what you expect. Now that we have the main functionality working, I'm going to move on to setting up a real receiver. You can either use POP3 or Mailder. I'm going to use POP3 here. I already have a Gmail account all set up for this, and it's very easy to configure. Just pass in this POP3 configuration like this, and you can also specify a polling. And right now it's going to default to 60 seconds. So back inside of the Mailman server script, I'll just paste in some configuration for that POP3 setting. And I'm going to use environment variables here for the username and password, just so it's convenient for me to set it off camera. But you may want to just enter those in directly here or use some kind of external configuration file. Now we can try this out by running that mailman server script directly and it will boot up the server and then pull for new incoming mail in the POP3 account. Now off camera, I just sent myself a message and you can see it in the log output here. It says it got the message from ryanatrailscast.com saying, hello world. Let's see if it showed up in the uh, tickets. Going to the site, you can see there it is. Looks like it works. Now, one thing that Mailman doesn't handle well is exceptions. You can see that I tried sending an email here with the update of an ID which does not exist in the database. And so it raised an exception, could not find a ticket with that ID, and then it actually crashed the server, so it's not going to uh, work any longer. And if I try to boot that up again, it's going to find the message and then crash again because it's still trying to process that message. To fix this, it's a good idea to avoid any exceptions which might occur based on user input. In our situation here, where the ticket ID didn't exist, we can just first check that the given ticket exists. And if it does, we can try to update it. And the same goes for validations here. When we try to create a ticket, it's a good idea to not do the bang, so that way if validations occur, it doesn't raise an exception. Now you could make this a little smarter if you want and provide some user feedback by sending out an email if there is some kind of validation error here, but I'll leave that up to you. Now even with all of this precaution, there's still a chance that an exception might get through. And if that happens, I don't want it crashing our mailman server. So what I can do is go inside of the default block in the server script and add a rescue clause here that looks something like this. So it still does the receive mail call, but if there's an exception that takes place, it will log that exception, actually log the full email message here so it has a backup copy that we can use if we need to rerun it, and then log the full exception there with the backtrace. So now when we start up our mailman server script again, it's not going to raise an exception anymore because it's going to uh, properly handle it this time. Um, but if it did raise an exception, it would catch it, properly log it, and then keep on going without crashing. Now before using this in production, it's a good idea to specify a logger. So what we can do instead of this mailman server script is call mailman.config.logger and set it to logger.new and pass in the path such as log slash mailman.log. 
and that way it'll log to that specific file instead of just going to S standard out. By the way, it's important that this script be run from inside of the Rails app directory because it uses some relative paths. There are some changes you can make to make it work in any directory, but normally that's not an issue. Now there may be some reasons you don't want to use the POP3 receiver. There is a definite polling delay, and uh, the MailDir option is really great, especially if you're running your own mail server. You could just point it to a MailDir uh, path using this config option, and it will do the rest automatically. Now, um, alternatively, if you want to use IMAP, you can use the git mail utility like it mentions here uh, in combination with MailDir. Also, keep in mind that this mailman script will load the Rails application, which may run into uh, some memory issues if you have a large app or maybe a small server. Um, this is convenient because you can access your models directly in here, but you may want to look for alternatives if you uh, don't want that memory taken up. Now you can disable the Rails loading by passing an empty string to the uh, Rails root config option. Uh, it says here you can pass in nil, but there's actually a bug involved in that. Um, if you do this, you'll probably want to use NetHTTP or something to submit a post request with the message data inside of it so that Rails can process it. Now if you're that concerned about memory, you may want to bypass Mailman entirely and just use the Mail Gem directly. It has some features for receiving email over POP. You can just pass in some options like it shows here, and then just fetch all the mail and just do this inside of a loop or something. Well, that's it for this episode on receiving mail through Mailman. Hope you found it useful.